one of the major campaign ideas of the Tinubu government when they were coming into power is a student loan. That concept was launched months ago and the office that administration was set up and it says it has begun dispersing the funds for how far? With many complaining about some issues as well in the southeast and say, oh, it hasn't really uh, been working in that region of the country. We're diving into a topic that affects countless students across Nigeria. The newly launched student loan scheme. Well, joining me to discuss this is the managing director of the student loan scheme, Mr. Akintude Sawyer. Thank you so much indeed for coming tonight. Thank you very much mm. indeed for having me. It's always a pleasure to be here. Yeah, thank you. The last time you were taken off. Now yeah. you are in the skies in terms of disbursement, in terms of operation. Yes. Give us an understanding. How many students have you enrolled so far? How much have you disbursed? Okay, so, so far, uh, let me break it into three portions. Uh, so, so far, we've registered about 200 and 370,000 students have actually visited and registered and entered their details onto our portal. 370,000. Mm. The number of students who have actually applied for the loan is about 280,000. So just to give you a, a sort of indication of what that all means, mm. we have um, a number of students who have not decided as to whether or not they want to proceed and apply, which is fair enough. It's a loan. People need to think about it. Um, about 89,000 of those exist. Um, but 270,000... 89,000 you have engaged actively. So, no. Th so there are three figures here. So there's 370,000 70, who have registered. Logged onto the portal. Logged onto the portal. Approached the portal. Approached the portal, put their details in the portal, their personal details, and have stopped short of just applying. Mm -hmm. 280,000 have actually applied. The difference between those two numbers is somewhere in the region of 298,000. So, uh, uh, 98, sorry, 89,000. 89, I beg your pardon, yeah. my numbers are a bit mixed up. Yeah. So that 89,000 represents those who are still considering whether or not to apply. Undecided. Undecided. You know, maybe they, they're waiting for, you know, permission from somebody, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because parental involvement may be important in this process. They're considering, they want more information, perhaps. But it's very healthy because, you know, it is a loan and it's important that people think about it carefully. We, we, we don't, you know, force people to, to do this. It's a big consideration and we uh, are careful. So uh, in all of the 280,000 that have successful, uh, successfully applied, how many of them have you successfully engaged? So when you say have we successfully engaged, um, the people who have applied, apply through an electronic portal. Mm -hmm. We don't tend to engage them directly. Um, essentially, uh, what has happened is that they've applied. Mm. Um, we're looking at their data. Uh, about 40,000 of them have been approved, and we've actually dispersed to them. 40,000? Uh, yes, about 40,000. Yes. That amounts to how much in Naira figures? Um, I think that's probably in the region of you know, 9, 10 billion Naira. About 10 billion has been... Yes, it disbursed. And it's gone into these f f uh, federal universities. No, so they're not just universities. So people can apply from universities, they can apply from polytechnics and from colleges of education. So it's not just universities. Okay. So it has to be tertiary uh, uh, institution owned by the federal government. Yes, tertiary institutions owned by the federal government. And as I said, universities, polytechnics, colleges of education. And the way we disburse the loans is that we pay the fees and so far, we have a commitment of paying fees of about 30 billion and about 60 billion in upkeep loans. So the second tranche of this is that we pay directly to the students an upkeep, a pocket money, if you like. Our commitment to that... Every semester or every session? How do you pay it? So the, the institutional fees are paid per session. So every session, we pay the institutional mm -hmm. fees. For the upkeep, we pay monthly. So the student will receive a monthly stipend every, you know, of 20,000. So do you keep records of the students? Uh, what are you doing? Because uh, definitely some students might be truants. Uh, some, with a lot of factors, can happen. Uh, incomplete registration by no fault of the school, but maybe the student missed something out. 
Uh, how are you able to keep track? So, the, 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 first of all, let me just talk to truancy. Um, we don't monitor attendance. Um, performance? It, no, no, we don't attend, you know, attendance or performance. So the disbursement is also not performance-based? No, it's not, not for merit? So it's important to recognize that what we do is we give loans based on people being admitted into the institution. And that's the basic? And that's the essential basis of us giving the loans. And of course, you know, that they're not able to pay themselves. They can't afford to pay themselves. But it, it, remember, this is not a scholarship. So really, we don't necessarily look at what the grades are. What we do do, and where that does come up, is that when they come to apply for the next session, they have to be, have been readmitted by the institution for them to be able to apply for the loan for the next session. But during the session itself, we don't actually monitor their performance. It is a loan, and, and I, I imagine that most people recognize that they will have to pay it back, so they actually do their best to ensure that they're doing the best that they can do. But this isn't sort of testing and trying to give loans to people who are the most clever in our society. So uh, your um, uh, agenda or uh, the purpose for which these, the NEL fund is set up is not to give grant to performing student or a highly cerebral student or a high flying student, but basic is to direct uh, your energy to indigent students. Is that right? Effectively, that is correct. So what we're looking for and we're actively looking to engage these people are people who have gained admission into a tertiary institution, don't necessarily have the funds either to commence or to complete their studies in that institution, whether it's over one session or four sessions or three sessions, however long it might be. Um, so our objective is to look, seek out and find these students and put this opportunity before them so that they know that the option of dropping out, which often isn't an option in itself, is not one that we want them to ever have to put up with. Mm. Um, we pay fees for those who are interested, who have qualified to en enter or access these institutions to be able to study. So the reason why I they... ask the question is this. So there are lots of people who cannot, and genuinely, they cannot afford a tertiary education. Sure. Uh, because of their social status. Yes. But there are those who are also interested, uh, but uh, not because they cannot afford it, but they just want to try it out. Sure. So the question is that there are those who will need it the most, and there are those, unfortunately, there are some who will apply and need it less that we get it compared to those who need it most and may not get it. So the sure. question is that how do you, if the effort of this government is to target indigent students and allow those who cannot afford education to go to school. Yes. Um, and the reason why some of us are paying more attention to education is that my parents didn't, couldn't afford to go to school yes. as much as they wanted to. Yes. My mother, very brilliant woman as yes. that, but couldn't afford to go beyond class seven. Same with my father. And perhaps the reason why they put a lot of effort, sold properties and made sure that some of us went to school. The question is, are you making effort in pushing those who cannot afford it? How, you, how are you able to identify indigent students? Okay, so look, fortunately, Sheung, mm -hmm. what has happened here is that the president, um, President Bola Ahmed Tinumbu GCFR, has ensured that this program is well funded. So we're not short of funds. We're not, you know, in a situation... So you can give anybody you like? We can, effectively. Um, but clearly what we want to make sure of is that we're giving those who need it the most. But at the stage we're How at... How do you identify them? That's a question. Well, you know, if you find students in a tertiary institution that's government-owned, you've all automatically uh, really found a catchment of people who can't necessarily afford to go private or can't necessarily afford to go abroad. So there's already a catchment in that space of people who are probably going to be needy. Look, I've visited... Uh, five geopolitical zones sensitizing students. We've touched about 25,000 students in the last eight or so weeks. And I've met all sorts of students. I've met students at institutions who are struggling to feed. I've met students at these institutions who seem to be okay in terms of paying their fees. But we've also discovered that for some of these students who seem to be okay, their parents are really struggling to keep them in the institution. 
Look, sensitization for us is about going out, meeting institutions, meeting students. I've been to institutions in this country where um, the authorities in the institution have actually set up funds to support students who you know, are about to drop out or who could drop out and are getting private donations. We're intervening very directly. The level of indigence is really high in public institutions. People start and can't finish. They lose parents along the way. Things happen to them. So you know, when we start talking about you know, seeking out indigent students, a student may not be completely indigent in their first session, but something happens to them. And in the second session, they are. So we, you know, the president is wanting us to catch as many as possible in tertiary federal government, federal and state government owned institutions so that we can actually catch those who may need it yeah. before they need Mr. it. Mr. Sawyer, uh, yes. uh, you're basically, uh, are you doing off the online application? Are you doing manual applications? No, we're not. This, this, so this yeah. is a problem. Yeah, you don't think that that is, that's an exclusion, uh, a ground for exclusion? Oh, absolutely. Look, whatever method you use, you're going to exclude somebody. The important thing for us to do is to be able to identify those we might be excluding and then mitigate for that. So, and I want to make a suggestion sure. to you. There are those that we underestimate or we overestimate uh, the, 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 the impact and the penetration of internet and the digital platforms. Sure. And so we neglect that we're still in some way very manual, even in the U.S. that we're talking about. U.S. is largely manual. U.S. uses a postal agency more than any part of uh, America or Europe that I know. And so, uh, and, and I want to suggest to you, is it possible that you make forms available to student unions, to student associations in the different institutions such that they can manually fill and maybe at the beginning of every session create a little office where in every state where people can physically walk in and submit their application. Is it possible? Sure. Because the online, a lot of people will say it's practically uh, an exclusion ground. Sure. So sure, look, you're absolutely right. Internet penetration, not just in Nigeria, is, you, you, is hardly ever 100%. And anyone who doesn't have access to the internet you're absolutely correct, is effectively, potentially excluded from being able to apply. However, we've considered that, and we're going into partnerships with specific private sector organizations. We haven't engaged directly in terms of contracting or signing agreements, but we're looking to work with institutions like banks, for example, who may be able to provide the opportunity for people who want to apply for these loans to come into the bank, which is a safe environment use a computer in the bank that's connected to the internet, get some support from bank staff or Nelfon staff so that they can access this facility. The danger with going manual is that you are, we're opening ourselves up to opportunities to for fraud, yeah, for corruption, and I for agree, misinformation. Totally. So, yeah. But we recognize mm. that you, know, you can't always have your cake and eat it. What we're trying to do is look at how we can do this in the best possible the way, reduce way. Yeah. exclusion. Because I don't have as much time. The sure. question of disbursement, there are delays in disbursement of funds. What happened? Has that been settled? So, you know, um, I'm not sure that there are what you would, could, would call delays. We have a process that we must follow. And the process is very simply this. When a student or students apply for this loan, we receive the applications. Mm. When we receive the applications, we process the applications. We give loans to those who qualify. Then we send that list to the institution to say, are these really your students? Mm. The, the institution must respond by saying to us, yes, these are our students. Sometimes there are delays in that process, but we must adhere to that process. Not because you are, you are, you are stifled with funds or maybe you don't have money. Is that the processing, the bureaucracy that is delaying the funds? We are absolutely not short of funds. The president has made sure that this is a very well-funded agency. It's not the funding. What mm. it is, is just the process of ensuring... So quickly also, 20,000 is what you're paying as stipend, isn't it? It is indeed. Yeah. yeah, are you open to increase? Because there are those who are complaining that uh, 
photocopies and all what the yeah. transportation feeding and yeah. all what have you yeah. that that may not cover are you open yeah. to increase or that I, is what it is right now we're certainly hoping to increase in due course mm. see the reality of it is that we are in a hyperinflationary mm. environment and it's difficult to sort of fix a fee because things cost of living is rising yeah. uh, you know quite quickly so you know at some point in the future, we're going to reevaluate what we're giving. But I want to point something out to you. This time last year, people had to find money for their fees. They had to find money for their upkeep. Mm -hmm. We're taking the issue of the fees off the table. So the institutional charges would take the issue off the table. So we've already eliminated that. Right. And then we're going to pay the stipend on top of that. Well, when we see something that will benefit the average person, we will clap and, up and, and praise it. Uh, when in the gender, if my parent had an opportunity like this to go to school more than what he did, uh, maybe things would have been better. Uh, but um, I think that we will borrow you some little wisdom. Yeah. Can you reach out to traditional rulers, local government, so that you can make noise about this, so that those who have not heard, there are still a lot of people who have not heard. Sure. But well, I wish you the very best. Thank you so much, Mr. Thank Sawyer, you for the for, advice and for thank your you time. for having me. I appreciate today. it. Thank you. Bye -bye.